Today we bake with cast iron. Hi, I'm Rosemary and you're watching Season Living. In today's episode, we're going to make a peach cobbler in a cast iron pan. It's going to have more of a sugar cookie crust instead of the bisquick mix. So stay tuned and see how we put this together. After we're done baking, I'll give you a quick little show of what I've done to decorate the kitchen for fall. So today's recipe, we're going to start with the cookie batter. It's uh, very similar to like a sugar cookie batter. So our wet ingredients are one half stick of butter. You can use salted or unsalted, whatever you have. One half cup of sugar, I'm using organic sugar. One eighth of a teaspoon of almond extract. One teaspoon of vanilla. One large egg. half a teaspoon of salt, which I'm just going to put on top of our flour here. This flour is something new to me. It's called einkorn flour. Uh, you can get it online. You can get it at Whole Foods. I think Amazon sells it. Um, it, is made, it is grown in Italy and it affects your digestive system differently than American wheat. It's easier to digest. So I'm gonna start working with this and we'll come along with me on our journey and we'll see how this works. It does uh, absorb at a different rate than American flour. It absorbs slow, slower, so you have to be careful to not over use liquids too much. So that's the flour we're gonna use, einkorn. All right, we have our wet ingredients in here. I'm gonna mix them up. Just wanna make sure that the butter and the sugar they're all combined if there's no lumps. We use room temperature of butter. All right, so now we're gonna slowly add our flour. It's one cup. You don't wanna over mix einkorn flour. So we're just gonna kinda get it Mixed slightly here. I'm going to make sure that I scrape down the sides. Give it just a couple more whirls. There we go. Now, we're going to need to put this batter into, or dough I should say, into the refrigerator for at least an hour. You can put it in overnight, but like I said, this uh, flour, it incorporates the liquids, the, the butter and the vanillas and things, at a different rate. So it needs to have time to kind of sit and rest. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it on a piece of saran wrap here. And roll it up and put it in the fridge. You could leave it in a bowl and cover it or whatever. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to roll it in a log. That way, when it comes time to placing it on the cobbler, I can just slice it and just lay the slices right on the cobbler. So we're going to roll it up. say about like that so about the size of my hand from is about what you'll need because this is going to be put in a skillet so we don't need super thin rounds but there I'm going to stick it in the fridge and in an hour it'll be ready for the biscuit top all right next we're going to make the filling and it's going to turn out similar to a pie filling so you're going to need four cans of canned peaches. I went with the unsweetened 
the syrup in it or the, the water in there is a lot thinner than the thicker peaches. If you want to use peaches that are canned with sugar, um, just use less sweetener. So four cans, these are 15 ounce cans. Drain them, but keep the juice. So put your, put your peaches in a separate bowl. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the juice, we're gonna pour it into a large saucepan. To that, we're gonna add two shakes of cinnamon. Not a lot, just a little bit. We're going to put in five tablespoons of honey. So instead of sugar this time, we're gonna use honey. Whenever you can cut out some of the sugar, it helps. We're going to use a quarter uh, teaspoon of almond extract, two teaspoons of lemon juice. You can choose to squeeze your own lemons or use the bottom kind, it doesn't matter. A teaspoon of vanilla. and a third of a cup of cornstarch. Now I'm using organic cornstarch, and for some reason you need to use a little bit extra, so I put a little extra in here. If you're using regular cornstarch, a third of a cup is enough. Now, before we take it to the stove, we wanna mix this. I'm gonna use a little whisk here. You wanna whisk it so that there are no lumps. And it takes a few minutes. So we're gonna whisk. It's gonna have kind of a pale, pale caramel color to it right now because of the cornstarch and the honey together. But when it's done cooking and it gets to a thick stage, it's gonna be almost like a, almost like a pudding, but like a runny pudding. And it'll it'll clear up. It won't have that foggy look anymore. We're almost there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to take it over to the stove and we're going to cook it on around a medium to medium low heat. And it's just like you're cooking pudding, whether you're using box pudding, whether you're making your own homemade pudding from scratch. And it's going to take a couple of minutes for it to thicken up to the stage that we want. So let's go to the stove. All right, we're at the stove and I want you to keep whisking. Just pretend like you're making a pudding where you don't want the lumps to come up. A whisk is the best. And if you want, you can use a wooden spoon also. This will get thicker and thicker. We're gonna bring it up to like a heavy simmer, almost a, almost a boil, similar to if you're making pudding. Now, if for some reason you step away for a second and you, you come back and you notice that Maybe there's some uh, clear looking globs that are coming to the, to the surface. Uh, go back to using the whisk and break them up as soon as you see them coming around. If you use a whisk the whole time, you're not going to have a problem with that. But sometimes with a wooden spoon, uh, it'll have a tendency to do that. You want to make sure that you cook it well enough that all that cornstarch gets cooked and it is not raw. And if it gets to a nice thick stage, you are sure it's, it's cooked. As you can see now, it's starting to thicken up, but it'll get thicker. And then also when the cobbler is completely done and you bring it out of the oven and you let it cool, it will thicken upon cooling more. It's just starting to bubble along around the edges and we're gonna let that just keep stirring it down keep stirring it down let it go for maybe another minute and we're gonna shut off the heat for right now we're gonna add our peaches Stir those in, let them get nice and warmed from this hot liquid. Now the next stage is we're going to slide that off and we're going to bring on our skillet that we're using today. We're going to put it on low and we're going to warm the skillet 
but we're also going to melt the butter. There's a tablespoon of butter in here. We want to get it all around the bottom and as much on the sides as you can. And if you can do that before it melts, it helps. But we want the pan hot to put our hot peach mixture into. Around the sides, all on the bottom. So we're doing two things at once. We're heating the pan and getting it so that the product won't stick. All right, now we're gonna pour our peach mixture into the skillet. Just try to make sure that your peaches are pretty much evenly distributed. Now for our cookie topping. We got our dough out of the fridge. We're gonna unwrap it. And we're gonna cut it into, oh, I wanna say about quarter inch slices. It's a little stickier than American dough. So just slice it as if you were slicing cookies for a roll of cookie dough that you buy in the store and you were going to put them on your cookie sheet, about the same thickness. We've also preheated the oven to 350. We're just placing them randomly. They're not going to, they're not going to touch. You want the, uh, the filling to kind of bubble up in between the peaches. Just use the entire roll of dough and you're, you're fine. Now we're going to bake these for 15 minutes on the 350. And then we're going to switch the oven to the broil section and leave it in for another seven minutes. What that will do is it will brown the uh, cookies on the top and they'll become a nice golden brown. So 15 minutes on 350. Make sure that everything, your skillet is hot, your peaches are hot, that way it starts the cooking of the dough the minute it hits. If for some reason you have to step away and the peach mixture cools down, just turn the stove back on and warm it back up so that it's ready for the oven. Now we're ready to put it into the oven. Now we're going to make the whipping cream. Real simple. It is one cup of whatever whipping cream that you choose, heavy whipping cream. We're going to do one cup. Two tablespoons of honey. Now we're not going to add vanilla to this whipping cream. A lot of homemade whipping cream you add vanilla flavoring usually with a sugar. We're using honey and there's enough flavor in the honey that um, I just don't feel that the vanilla is necessary. The last thing we need is just a pinch of salt. Sprinkle it in. You don't need a lot. Maybe a sixteenth of a teaspoon, something like that. And now we're going to mix. Perfect. It's not butter, it's just whipping cream. You to keep mixing, it'll turn into butter. So there you have it. I'm going to put this into a smaller bowl, put it in the fridge, so as soon as the, uh, the cobbler comes out of the oven and it cools down enough, we'll plate it up and let you see it. Now that it's out of the oven, we're going to let it cool down a bit, and when it's cool enough, we will serve it up with our whipped cream topping. Well, it's finally cooled down enough to enjoy, so let's serve some up. The cookie crust turned out perfect. It's nice and golden brown without being too dark or too light. It's nice and juicy. It's not dry. Our whipping cream is nice and chilled from being in the fridge. We'll put a dollop of whipping cream on. And there you have it. Peach cobbler with the cookie crisp. I think we'll pour a cup of tea and enjoy this. So until next time, enjoy your season. 
this wall I have a hanging basket that has faux pears in it, a wood sign, and a metal candle holder shaped like a leaf, and it has a um, battery operated candle so we don't have to worry about flame. On this side of the room we have a French bookcase that I'm using as a china cabinet and I have filled it with jewel tea dishes that I've been collecting for a few years. Up above on either side we have a shelf with um, white pitchers that have branches in them, uh, vent, um, velvet pumpkins and little tea candles and behind each one is a brown transfer wear platter and the little cabinets down below I have a pitcher on one, a vase, and a pumpkin underneath glass. And on the other side, I have a vintage coffee grinder, a treat container for our puppies, and a little wax candle that looks like a pie. The table, we kept it simple, just a white vase, a pitcher, I'm sorry, and filled with the branches from outdoors. I have a wood cheese tray that I'm using for its base, and there are faux acorns that are on the bottom. Then on the wall over here by the phone, and yes, it works, and yes, I use it. <laughs> I am old school. I have a plate rack that has uh, plastic chargers in a burnt orange color that I got from Hobby Lobby on sale. Uh, the black glass plates behind it and the front plates were from a thrift store for 50 cents a piece and the um, fall swag that is above it that is made with pine cones and white berries I've had for a couple of years. Now on top of the cabinets I collect soup tureens and other white dinnerware and I just display them up here. I have them with some bittersweet running along and also I used some fall uh, fairy lights and they are on a timer and they come on at night. They just give a nice glow to the kitchen. And here we have a ceramic candle that is battery operated so it's safe, a ceramic bottle, a wood pumpkin on a glass cake plate surrounded by some false swag circled around it. <laughs> 